Welcome to the podcast Sube de volumen Conversation with the people who were with me In the world TV Hola, bienvenidos, and welcome to Carlos Tonight. If you love movies like I do, then let me tell you about what's happening online this week. It's the 12th annual OC Film Fiesta. It runs through October 24th, and one of the films selected for the festival is Changes, directed by Josue Oropesa, who I had the honor of interviewing about five years ago for the San Diego Latino Film Festival. That was fun. And so I'm excited to welcome the one of the stars of Changes, Cisco Fernandez. Hey, Cisco, how are you? Hi, everyone. Hi, Carlos. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. It's good to have you. Um, you know, I saw the film a few days ago. And uh, it was fantastic and very real. Tell the audience what it's about. So, uh, well, thank you, first of all. But the film is about essentially uh, um, an immigrant worker who is hustling his butt off to make ends meet. Um, he's just living in a normal world. Um, but he interacts with people who are in a different uh, income level. And then there's the, the antagonist. Um, she gives him a hard time um, and she looks down on him. But he means well and he's just there to make a living an honest living though and the only way he knows how is just like you know to be a street vendor so she clashes with him and it's more like her struggles with accepting that he's just a hard worker he's not here to cheat the system or anything like that and at the end at the end of it it's a nice interaction i think karen gains a different perspective tracy machado who plays karen uh she's just so great in this film and you did a wonderful job as well. Thank what you. attracted you to this role? Well, I really like that the it involves the immigrant hustle to make a to make a to make ends meet. Like my parents, they they immigrated from Mexico, so they have they've always had labor jobs. Like my dad cuts yards for a living, and he works at a restaurant as a busboy. And my mom cleans houses. They've been doing it for twenty plus years. So when I read the script, and I'm like, this is what my parents do, but like they're not vendors, but you know, they have that immigrant spirit and immigrant hustle. Like we're going to do the work we can and make an honest living with that. And I really appreciated that. So I was like, I could definitely bring that to the table because I grew up around it. So your character's name is Pablo. Um, yes. For me, Pablo represented like um, a father, maybe a grandfather, a son, an uncle who came to this country to uh, better their life and provide for the family. Um who do you think Pablo is and who he represents? Uh, I think Pablo represents kind of like in a way like people who come here for the American dream. You leave to you, you sacrifice, you know, to provide for your family. Um, you enter like a territory that is unknown. Like Pablo didn't really know the U.S. I feel like if he knew more about it, I don't think he'd be selling flowers. I think he has the skill set to do other stuff, yeah. but that's what he knows. But I think Pablo represents all of like our immigrant parents, our grandparents, you know, they they came here to the unknown and then they have to like navigate this landscape and deal with like the Karens that don't understand. They're just they think black and white like, oh, you're here right. illegally. <laughs> They're like, so you're up to no good. So I think he represents like the ambition. Right. to be here yeah my family had to deal with the same thing we had a karen in our lives <laughs> oh yeah i think we all did <laughs> <laughs> all right so um so watching this film i kind of got angry when when karen appeared and she was being mean and whatnot uh, tell me what it was what it was like for you guys on set having to film this tough topic about racism in america well first of all i'd like to say that our karen is completely complete opposite than Tracy in real life. It was so interesting because Tracy's so nice in real life. She's like, do you need water? Like, she's like, do you need chips? And I'm like, you're the complete opposite of your character. She's like, I know. <laughs> but, you know, so that's interesting. It, it, well, I mean, she's very nice, so I'm not surprised. Um, but it felt like it felt like it was needed to showcase her in that way and show my character in that way, just because, like, it is still a topic. Like, it's 2021, but, like, racism is still out here. Like, I'm yeah. in Arizona. It's a very conservative... Well, it's it's not as conservative as it used to be, but I remember when I was in elementary, SB 1070 was around, mm -hmm. and I remember, like, my parents were very scared of it, and my friend's parents were very scared of it. So I think um, even though it seems like it wasn't it wasn't too long ago and that stuff is still relevant. I just think 
it's more uh i think by jose doing this it puts like a magnifying glass over it like this is still happening you know it might not get the media attention every day but but immigrants are still getting harassed, especially street vendors out in California. So, by the way, the film um, was also part of the Georgia Latino International Film Festival earlier this fall. Um, has your family and friends seen it? And what reaction did they have? Yeah, I showed my friends uh, and I showed them the, the the first draft that was sent to us. And then they 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 said that they really liked it. But I was like, are they saying that because they're my friends? You know, like I always <laughs> right. feel very annoyed about that. But then I showed the final product to them. And then that's when they were like, hey, this is a, like on a very good level because he paid for audio pro- like a, for us to like get in a studio. And then we redid some scenes mm-hmm. and then uh, we did a movie poster. And then my sister and my mom and, and my dad saw it. And they were like, wait, you're in a movie poster. And I was like, yeah, and it's in a film festival. So um, I think. If anything, my mom and my sister are probably like, good for you. Like, because I've been telling them this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so when they saw that it made like a film festival, especially the the Atlanta one, mm-hmm. they were like, wait a minute, you're actually not just talking about it. You're doing it. Because mm-hmm. when I say like I have a an acting gig, I say I have a project. Like I, was, I, right. I go to an acting gig, you know. Yeah. So that's awesome. it felt really good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Is this your big like fist, uh, first film? Well, it's like... See, I did I did a seventy two hour challenge three years ago with mm-hmm. in, with my improv class, mm-hmm. but I only had improv training. So when we did the video, it was only like a group of six of us. So I was one of the leads because like I was like, oh, I want to do act. I don't I don't want to be a writer, or whatever producer. Um, and we entered and we lost. <laughs> and when I look back at the footage, I was blinking nonstop, like you know. But I mean, <laughs> it was like our first time around. And then now that I have classes under my belt, I realize that you blink a lot because you're nervous on camera. And I'm like, I was definitely nervous, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, a lot of people get nervous on camera. I mean, even when I first started in television, like 20 years ago, um, yeah. like my first day. Well, actually, every day of my career, I was ner- you get a little nervous. Yeah. Your heart starts pumping, but once the camera starts, you're just like, you're in your world. Is that how, yeah, yeah. how you do it? Yeah, I mean, it's always nerve-wracking. I think what's really helpful is when you have a director like how we did. Um, he like talks to you beforehand and breaks down stuff with you. Um, and then he was there to guide us on what his vision was. So mm-hmm. I think that's really helpful. I don't th- if, if it wasn't for that, then I'd be like, I would nonstop adrenaline. <laughs> So um, right around the time I was interviewing your director in San Diego mm-hmm. for a film he did along the U.S.-Mexico border, you were actually graduating from Arizona State University. How did you end up in the field of movie making and acting? Well, okay, see, so uh, my major was criminal justice. Uh, I was under the assumption, like, I'm going to be a lawyer. That's what I wanted to do. Um, but, like, I just a lot of stuff happened in my undergrad. Uh my my dog got sick, so I used my fast my fast one money, the leftover. It was supposed to go towards like an in person law school program because I wanted to go to law school, and the program was like five hundred plus test fees and all this. But my dog got sick, so I used oh. the money to pay for her vet bill. Mm-hmm. So I was studying for the LSAT on my own, but I'm not good at doing that. So like, I took the LSAT and I did horrible. <laughs> like, oh, I, no. I think I got a one thirty, so I'm like, that's not happening. <laughs> And I'm like, oh. I'm not going to retake it. It's expensive. So long story short, I, just apply, I applied for a ton of internships. No one was taking me. So then I landed something in D.C. with the Hispanic Con- Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. Um, so I stayed there for two years. But then while I was there, I was like, I, w- I was unhappy. I felt like unfulfilled. And then I was like, I'm just going to start doing stuff that I like. So I started joining improv and theater classes. And then I was asking people at receptions because like everybody... I felt like was connected and I'm like, how do I get in the industry? Like I was kidding around, but I wasn't at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then someone said, you should join the NBC page program. It's like an entry level. You're kind of like a fellow intern for a year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. So then I just started like sending a whole bunch of emails. Do you know someone who works here? And then someone finally got back to me. And I think that's why I got an interview. And I also felt like it was like divine timing. So then from there, while I was at NBC, like, even though I was there to do the corporate side, I was like, I'm here to learn about acting, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so, it, and it's all kind of working out, you know? So it makes me happy. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Um, so like you mentioned, you were um, the congressional, uh, a, a congressional intern. 
uh, uh-huh. working in the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C., and working with the uh, uh, Congregational Hispanic Caucus Institute with yeah. your, um, I can't even read my writing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. did you, in that type of work, did you ever run into people like Pablo? And yes, how, how was your research for the part? Well, okay, see, like, okay, I don't want to sound like cliche, but I think in that environment, I felt like the Pablo because, like, like I said, my mom, she's a house cleaner. My dad's a busboy, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm super proud of what they do. Yeah. But I've never been in an environment where it's just, like, people come from money. So, like, I think I never was under the assumption that, like, we were, I guess, low income on paper because my parents provided so well. But when you're in the D.C. environment, you start hearing about my family does this like family summer vacation every summer. And then you start hearing about like, are you going to this event? Do you drink this type of wine? I'm like, what is that? Like, you know, so I felt like out of place. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, but I wasn't the only one. There's a lot of first generations out there, which I think is great. And you start building bonds with them and you, that's how you navigate that system. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lucky to have a good support system in that way. Um, but as far as like preparing for this role, um, see, it's interesting. Uh, he hit me up the day before and I had seen the casting call, but I didn't submit cause the age range said like late twenties, early thirties. And I'm like, Oh, they're probably looking for like a dad uncle. So I'm like, I'm not going to submit even though I saw it. Um, but then he hit me up the day before and I was like at the store and he said, Hey, are you free? Like we have some last minute changes. Uh, I, I saw that you're on the ASU database. Can you do it? And I said, yeah, I'm always looking for ways to like up my resume. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, this is a cool experience. And then he was so nice to us. Like he made sure that everybody was taken care of, which I appreciated. Um, so then I just thought like, oh, cool. Is this going to be like something that I could put on my resume? Mm-hmm. But then I see him doing all this, like hustling, making sure it's going places. And he's like, hey, we're into uh, film festivals. And I was like, what this is crazy (laughs) but seeing how he worked on the set though i'm not surprised because he he is such a hard worker and i really appreciated that that's right hard work pays off yeah and then he told me a story of like because i was telling him like how do you have connections to people with these fancy houses because we filmed in arizona Mm -hmm. and i'm in mesa so like our houses are not like fancy so we were like in paradise valley and i'm like how are you friends with these people and then he was like (laughs) see, I'm actually not. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, how do they let you? And then he's like, I was just knocking door to door and I explained the concept and eventually someone said yes. And I was like, he's going places. I'm talking with Cisco Fernandez, one of the stars of the short film Changes that is a part of the 12th annual OC Film Fiesta taking place online through this weekend. Cisco, we have something in common. I used to work for NBC back in the day. And you oh, cool. you said you worked there as a page right now or in the past? No, in the past, a year ago. Past. So um, I would say my question to you is how do you juggle like work and uh, family life and your personal life with acting? Well, I think, see, I know the pandemic was a horrible time for everybody. Um, yeah. Normally what happens when you end the NBC page program, they give you three months to look for a job in the company and they pay you during that time. But in my head, I knew like, I don't want to work here in that way. Like, I don't want to be behind the desk. I want to be in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. So I was like struggling, like, how am I going to do this? Um, but then COVID happened. So I moved back to Arizona and I was upset because I was like, oh man, I'm away from the industry now. But like, I just started signing up for classes here. I started looking, I got an agent and then I have a presentation in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm still able to get work in that way. But because I'm back home, um, I'm able to save money and I don't have the pressure of like, I need to make my rent, you know? But uh, I do a lot of side gigs. Like I'm doing Uber Eats right now. I'm getting my substitute certificate, so I don't have to work every day. It's just three days out of the week, you know? So So, how does that work with your agent? Do they call you and say, okay, we have, like, this role, this role, you should, you know, submit or something? Yeah, so, like, the way they do it is they're more, like, they have, like, I guess the connections to the casting people. So, like, Mm -hmm. they submit you. Um, but just because they submit you doesn't mean they want to see you. They they go based off your headshots. Mm -hmm. Um, And then from there, like, 
if you get the audition, you're expected to go because the agent put in the work to get you there. Mm -hmm. um, and because like when people ask me, what do you do? I don't tell them like I'm an actor because they're people are like, what Netflix are you on? <laughs> or we're going to see you on Harkins. <laughs> so I tell people I'm an entrepreneur because I'm like kind of same thing. <laughs> you know, you have to go exactly. look for your work. So um, <laughs> yeah. So like it actually like that, like like today, I actually have a callback for a commercial. And I'm so excited because last year I wasn't really getting callbacks. Mm -hmm. But this year I feel like I'm in a better state of mind and it's stuff is picking up. So I guess That's just awesome. patience. Thank you. Yeah. Just I guess just patience is key and putting in the work that people don't see behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue because I was going to ask you, uh, for young people who are listening and watching our conversation today, what advice would you give them about starting out if they're interested in a career in acting? Uh, I would say for sure, like if you're curious about it, I, I would say it's for a reason. I don't think like it's a coincidence. I think everyone is born a creative, but like I think the nine to five world, I'm not talking down on it because like I, I thrived on the nine to five world, but I think uh, people think if you're not making money from it right off the back, why are you doing it? But I would say tap into it, get curious and be surrounded with people who are in that environment, like any type of creative. And I think you need at least one friend that you can call and vent to and, you know, a safe spot. Cause like for me, I have that. Um, but also, uh, I also have like, sometimes my family will be like, well, you why don't you use your degree to do something else instead i'd say don't listen to that <laughs> it doesn't right. have to make sense to everybody it just has to make sense to you absolutely and we talked earlier about um how you got into acting what is it about acting that you love see since i was little uh, i grew up we grew up in a trailer park and i remember we would always the only free channels we had were telemundo and and univision so when i saw them on tv i was like I always thought like, oh, I can't do that because I'm not rich. Like, I feel like you had to be rich. Yeah. But then like once I got in D.C. and then D.C. would bring a lot of the entertainers to conferences. And then I would ask them like, oh, what was your upbringing? Some would say like, yeah, like my family connections, whatever. Well, they wouldn't say like that, but it was implied. Mm -hmm. But then like some would be like, you know, like I did whatever it took. Like I did unpaid work. And I started thinking about it and I was like, wait, I've done unpaid work and internships. So I'm like, if I... If I like, uh, like, tr or transfer the nine to five mindset, because when you when you're building a political resume, you do a lot of unpaid work and you go through crappy experiences. Right. So I'm like, wait, if I can do that here in politics, I can do it in entertainment. So then I just kind of was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, it's just, <laughs> and that's kind of just been my mindset. For many people, um, Desi Arnaz, Freddie Prince and George Lopez they're like inspirations and trailblazers. Um, and my question is, do you think we'll see more Latinos down the road? Um, and do you have any actors currently that you look up to? Um, yes, I think we'll definitely see more Latinos down the road. Um, when I was at NBC, I, I sat in on Writers on the Verge. And what um, NBC was really great at was they would recruit diverse writers and they would like kind of like groom them so they could work in different studios. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, the stuff that I'm seeing, there's more uh, Latino characters, which I think is great. Um, I'm not a big fan of like the like the the gang cholo ones. Like for me, it's it's, it's interesting. Like the like, Mayans, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Well, because like, see, like sometimes when I get some when I see role descriptions for like a uh, late teen cholo member, or whatever, like has an accent. I'm like, okay, I guess I could look, I, I know I can look late teens, but in my head, I'm like, wait, in my real life, I have a degree and I don't have an accent and I don't, I've never been high. So I'm like, you know, it's interesting, but like, I definitely do see other stuff. Like I know with Acapulco, it's on Apple TV, they have young Maximo. And I think that story was great. It's like a guy, it's kind of like a Pablo. He does whatever he has to do to make ends meet, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's definitely way more stuff. Um, and I know ABC is coming out with a pilot that is centered around a Hispanic family. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be really cool to watch. Um, Absolutely. I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you were playing Pablo in Changes, did you feel any pressure uh, on how to properly portray him in the film? Um, yes, because like I, I think... Uh, 
I think there was like one or two takes that didn't make the cut. But when uh, Tracy was telling me something, I said something back like in an attitude because it was just my <laughs> instinct. <laughs> but then the director was more like, hey, Pablo is just more like he's subtle. Like, you know, he wouldn't retaliate. And in my head, I was just like, I want people to see that Pablo is going to stand up for himself. But he was just more like, oh, that message will be clear um, at the end, you know, without him having to do that. But because whenever I see videos of like vendors getting attacked, I'm like, yeah. oh, I, I, you know what? I wish like they could be like, you know what? Screw you, this and that. But like, you know, yeah. I guess that was hard for me because I wanted to show that. But seeing how the the short film turned out, I'm like, OK, I understand why Pablo wouldn't do that. Cisco Fernandez, one of the stars of the short film Changes. It's part of the 12th annual OC Film Fiesta, available online throughout this weekend. What reaction are you getting from people about this film and your performance? So I think I think because uh, I've been telling people like, oh, I, I, I'm I'm going to do acting. Just just you wait and see, you know, mm-hmm. I think because people saw like the poster and then it had the official selection. And then I think uh, it got reposted by the Georgia Film Latino uh, Instagram page. Mm-hmm. People are probably like, oh, crap, he's doing it. And it's interesting because I'm getting messages from people who are like uh, in their mid 20s who did stuff in the political world. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, I've always wanted to do something creative, but I'm kind of shy. But I see that you're doing it. And I'm like, OK, that's great. You know, so like it makes me happy that other people are like, maybe if he can do it, then I guess I can do something creatively, too. So it makes me happy. That's awesome. You're becoming a role model. Uh, I I mean, uh, it's nice, but also I make it clear to people like, oh, hey, like I know like right now is like I'm showing like a W, but like before this, I I had like a meltdown because I'm like, I had like 12 no's. I'm like, so what does this mean? You know, but then when you get something like this, I'm just like, it's cool. You know, like, I don't know. It's just part of the journey. Absolutely. But I make it clear like, hey, there's a lot of L's that go behind the scenes. Yeah. How long did uh, it take you guys to film? Um, two days. But then I know uh, we had, uh, it was two days, but then we did the audio stuff. So that was another day. And then we redid a scene. So I would say like a total of four days. Mm-hmm. But I know the first two days, they were like longer days. So in case somebody wants to see more of Cisco, um, what other projects are you working on that you can share with us today? Well, I have the callback for the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> um and then I'm actually doing a, a theater show. I, I've not, I've never really done theater, but I was I about submit. to ask you, do you do local theater? Uh, as of this week? Yes. <laughs> so I submitted and I'm like, I've never done it, but I saw that it was a paid gig. It, it's for like a, a, a teen Latino son um, mm. and they liked it. So I'm doing that these next two weeks. Um, and then I have an, a California agent. So, Hopefully on pilot season, I land something and you guys will see me on a streaming service. <laughs> That's going to be cool. When is pilot yeah. season? Uh, January, February. Okay, cool. That's just around the corner. Yeah. So um, my final question to you is, what do you want people to walk away with from checking out this short film? Well, I think I really want, aside from the actual message, I, I think it's I think it's really important for people to know, like, you don't need a big budget to do something. Like when I look how Josue did it, he just like was worked with what he had. And I think because he's very personable, people were willing to like stay the long hours. Uh, I know people came from Flagstaff and that's like a two hour drive to come to where we were shooting. Mm -hmm. And I wish people could see, like I wish I had a camera to like show you guys how he was making stuff happen. Like, especially when he told me the story of him knocking on doors for a fancy house, I'm like, you know who does that but he did it so i i hope people take away like i don't need a big budget um and as long as there's an authentic story people are willing to listen and once you start submitting you never know who's going to pick it up so i want people to walk away with that message and also i guess as far uh, as far as the film like there's no shame in the job that you do if it brings you money and you're not like breaking the law then keep doing it (laughs) Absolutely. The short film Changes, starring my guest, Cisco Fernandez, is available this week at the 12th annual OC Film Fiesta, taking place online. I'll have a link to the festival in the show notes so you guys can purchase tickets and support this great and important film. Cisco, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Good luck with your career and God bless you. 
Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And that's a wrap. This episode of Carlos Tonight was written and produced by yours truly, Carlos Correa. My theme was produced by Skin Gallus. You can check out carlostonight.com for the very latest on the podcast, see upcoming guests, check out past episodes, all that and more. carlostonight.com Dale que bien.